to, 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 to what you were saying before. So, we do think there is such a thing as sexual, sexual sin, and we do think that this includes homosexual acts. Okay? So, as a Christian, we acknowledge our own sin first, we take the, the, the log out of our own eyes before we take the log out of others. Yeah? So, what we do first is we acknowledge our own sin, and that includes things like uh, having sex out of marriage, that's one. Uh, it also includes homosexuality, it includes incest, it includes pedophilia, it includes bestiality, it, well, it includes all sorts of things. But what I want you to sort of ground yourself with is a lot of the time Christians are portrayed as targeting homosexuals or, or seeing that as explicitly bad like or more, much worse than other sexual sin. We don't because all sexual sin is sin at the end of the day. Okay. Disagree with that? I do. So let me explain why. It's because the idea of a Christian marriage comes from the notion of Adam and Eve ultimately. So we look back at the Old Testament and we see how God intended uh, humanity to come together, at least in the context of a bodily union. So as a man and a woman, literal intercourse, like literal bodily union. So through that, we hold that as our example. Now it's interesting to point out that there are many prophets, like David, like Solomon, who didn't follow things perfectly and they did many things that were wrong. So for example, David had an affair with Sheba. He had many concubines. He did many things that were wrong. He even had sexual relations with women who weren't from the Jewish religion. So they would have been pagans. And that's also a big no-no. But at the same time, we still consider these people prophets of God because they did things that were good. So, when we look at our lives, we can't just look at the bad and focus just on the bad and say, no, we're going to condemn that, we're going to, no, no, you have to say, well, actually, you have to be balanced here. Someone might struggle with some sin, but they also do good as well. So you have to take into account both. Now, I'm not saying that's a, an acceptance of the bad, as in, oh, it's totally fine, don't worry about it. I am affirming that, yes, there are things that are bad. And homosexuality as a sin, and I'm being very explicit here, the act of homosexual sex is a sin. But to love others, yeah. what a thought process. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, so let me explain. So as a man, as a red-blooded man, there are many women I find attractive that thoughts will come into my mind and I will actively have to be like, I'm not going to engage in them. Yeah? There's a phrase. You can't stop a bird from landing on your head, but you can stop it from nesting there. Sin is going to come to us all in many different ways. And many people experience it differently. So for me personally, sexual sin has always been something that I've had to struggle with and many friends that I know have had to struggle with. And there's also women as well that have to struggle with that. The question is, is what do you do about it? And how are you actively trying to put, separate yourself from them? But ultimately, we are human. So the Christian idea is not you have to be immaculate, you can never sin ever, otherwise you're condemned as a... No, not at all. Yeah. Say I have to condemn those thoughts and feelings and actions. Okay, so myself. so let me say how that is. And basically act straight when I'm not. So you will be called to do what you can to resist sexual actions that are not good. In the same way that I am, as someone who isn't uh, isn't married, doesn't have a wife, so I'm I'm called to refrain from that. And I'm held just to the same account as you are. There isn't any difference in that. The only difference is, is for me, it's homosex uh, heterosexual things that I struggle with, and for you it might be different. But what I would say is, if you're actively engaging in the thoughts and you're enjoying them and you're pursuing them, then that is a bad thing. But you need to put that in context of what that means. Don't think it's ha hail and brimstone, condemnation, going to tell you that you're a horrible person. No because everyone sins, everyone has bad thoughts. When I wake up and I get in an argument with a member of my family, that is so. When I don't give God the glory that he deserves, that's so. So it's best to have a level-headed and intelligent response about what this is, as opposed to have a sort of naive, it doesn't affect me, therefore it's super bad kind of approach.
Yeah, it's not it's not targeting. The reason why it's a high high what do you call it? The reason why it's talked about a lot in the media is precisely because there are the civil rights movements. And so the Christian has a very difficult job because the Christian has to on the one hand be like, look, we love you, uh, we, we want the best for you, we want you to come to Christ, we won't wish any harm on you, we don't want anything bad to you, but we kind of also want to say that in our view this is wrong. And so the Christian has a very difficult challenge to try to convey that. So what's interesting is, historically speaking, when you look at LGBT groups, we look at Stonewall, for example, they actually had a response to this because for a while Christians were saying this. They were saying, we have nothing against homosexual people. We just wish that they would not engage in that in the same way that we wish that us as Christians would cease having sex with people outside of marriage. Would you say that, that I know it's kind of impossible for someone to know before, the same way someone would marry a homosexual, would they still marry so what do you mean by that? If a couple was going to be married yep. and they were Christians and they had already had sex with yep. kids, would, yep. that be, would they not be married because they sinned in that way? Oh, no, they would be married. They would get married. the active sin that you're marrying someone of the same gender as your husband? Are you talking in the context Sorry. of homosexuality or, in, or just in heterosexuality? Which, which context are you talking about? Sex before marriage is also a sin. Yeah. And um, a couple of being married, they've already had kids, they've already had sex. Yeah, yeah. Are you saying they shouldn't get married or they need to do something being before? Being viewed or? in the same way? It will be viewed Sorry, just... Really so, so, no, that's all right. Let, let, me, let me just... Yeah, that's all right. Let's just talk about it and see, see where it goes. So... Um, that happens quite a lot, as you can imagine. There are many Christians who, because of desires, especially if they're young, they end up having sex outside of marriage, which is a sin, but it's not the, we're going to chuck you out of the church, condemn you, never see you again thing, but rather we humble ourselves and say, you know what, I can understand how that can happen, because as a man, you know, I understand what it means to have sexual desires. There's a difference between saying something is good and something is bad, and to actively hurt or attack someone, right? Because we probably have a lot of like overlapping grounds. We, I, I don't know what your beliefs are, but I don't think incest is, is good, right? I don't think bestiality is good. I don't think paedophilia is good. Uh, having sex with animals. Okay. So, even if you're not a Christian yet, I hope, <laughs> we already have a, a lot of overlapping grounds. We already agree on most of the sexual things. The only difference is that as a Christian, we would say that homosexuality in terms of man having sex with man, woman having sex with woman, we don't think that's good. But we're not going to persecute her that. In the context of marriage, um, we simply encourage marriage because we, we think marriage is good. It's a sacrament in the Christian religion. So we would say, yeah, if you're Christians, uh, you're struggling with sexual sin, but you want to get married? Yeah, absolutely. As long as there's no like uh, no reason not to get married, so I don't know, like the man beats the woman or something like horrible like that. Oh gosh, yeah. If you if a man beats his wife, yeah, that's horrible. Sorry, actually, you're a priest. Married? Yeah. Well, it depends. If the priest knew the man was beating the woman, yeah, that would be a reason not to marry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we literally have a thing, right? You might have seen it in the media where in church services, the, the vicar or the priest will announce, does anyone here have any reason why these two shouldn't get married? And that's literally a time for someone to say up and say, that guy beats his wife. <laughs> right. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. No worries, I hope that helps. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the main thing that's helped me for ever fully engaging with moving here has made me feel Sure, sure. Yeah. No, that's fine. I think it's, it's good just to know that Christianity ultimately is about loving individuals because we're called to. We actually have a command to do that, so we have to do it. We, when we try to do so sincerely because we humble ourselves and acknowledge our own problems first. That's what Christians should be doing. 
Now, there are many Christians who are not going to be the best example of Christianity. And it's really sad that a lot of the time people see those Christians acting in certain ways as hypocrites or as people who are judgmental, who have this really super high view of, no, you're a bad person and things like that. But in reality, they struggle with their own problems. No one's going to be perfect. There's only one who is, and that is Jesus Christ. Yeah. You heard the story about how uh, Jesus, um, he saw a woman who was going to be stoned. You, have you heard that story? The Pharisees were going to stone a woman for committing adultery. And he comes to them and he, he rides on the ground and he says, um, let who is, free, who is free from sin cast the first stone. And the idea is, is that all the religious leaders were like, well, we've actually done quite a lot of sin in our own lives. So they back away and they refuse to stone her. He then talks to her and he says, you're free now, sin no more. Yeah? In other words, do your best. We're not saved by, uh, by our good works. We're saved because of our relationship with Christ. Right, Chris, what there, Chris? Had a chat with a couple of Muslims. Uh, I don't think the English was too great, but we had a chat about how Muhammad, he, according to these Muslims, actually did some immoral acts, um, as, which was surprising to hear because most Muslims don't hold to that view. But he admitted that Muhammad did do things that were wrong. He said that Aisha at the age of nine was wrong. He said that Muhammad stoning Jews was wrong. And then I wanted to contrast that with the person of Jesus Christ because Jesus, by the very claim of the Muslims, is a moral person who is more moral than Muhammad. So I'm calling on Muslims to abandon their religion and to look to Jesus Christ and look to him because he is the way, the truth and the life and no one comes to the Father except through him. God bless.